Welcome to Miss Scarlet. Subscribe and don't miss out on Patreon. Have fun! The city lights glimmered like stars fallen to earth as the taxi wove through bustling streets. Inside, Alex fidgeted nervously with the hem of his, no, her, dress. The soft fabric felt foreign against his skin, a constant reminder of the bizarre situation he found himself in. You okay there, sis? Megan's voice cut through his thoughts. You look like you're about to jump out of your skin. Alex forced a smile, trying to channel Bella's easy confidence. Just excited for tonight! He lied smoothly. In truth, the prospect of a girl's night out terrified him. How was he supposed to navigate the intricacies of female friendships when he'd spent his whole life as a man? The taxi pulled up to a swanky rooftop bar, neon signs casting an ethereal glow over the entrance. As they stepped out, the cool night air sent a shiver down Alex's spine. He wobbled slightly on Bella's high heels, earning a concerned look from Megan. "'Those new shoes giving you trouble?' she asked, linking her arm through Alex's to steady him. "'Just breaking them in,' Alex replied, grateful for the support. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for the night ahead. "'Let's do this.' The elevator ride up to the rooftop was a blur of perfume, excited chatter, and the clack of heels on polished floors. When the doors slid open, Alex was hit with a wall of sound, pulsing music, laughter, and the clink of glasses. The rooftop bar was a riot of color and movement. Strings of twinkling lights crisscrossed overhead, casting a soft glow over the crowd. Well-dressed patrons lounged on plush sofas or crowded around high-top tables, cocktails in hand. A DJ booth in the corner pumped out infectious beats that had people swaying even as they talked. There they are! Megan exclaimed, dragging Alex towards a group of women near the bar. Ladies, look who I brought! Alex found himself engulfed in a flurry of air kisses and high-pitched greetings. He recognized a few faces from Bella's social media. Sarah, the bubbly blonde, Jess, with her signature red lipstick, and Olivia, whose piercing green eyes seemed to see right through him. Bella, babe, it's been ages! Sarah gushed, pulling Alex into a hug that smelled of flowers and vodka. We were starting to think you'd gone hermit on us! Alex laughed nervously, trying to channel Bella's easy charm. You know me, always keeping you on your toes. Well, we're glad you made it out tonight, Olivia said, her gaze sharp. First round's on me. What's your poison? Panic flashed through Alex. What did Bella usually drink? He scrambled for an answer, landing on the first cocktail that came to mind. Uh, vodka cranberry? The group fell silent, staring at him in disbelief. Shit! Had he said something wrong? Jess burst out laughing. Since when do you drink basic bitch juice, Bells? I thought you were a whiskey girl through and through. Alex felt his cheeks burn. I, uh, I'm trying to branch out, he offered weakly. Olivia's eyes narrowed slightly, but she shrugged it off. One whiskey sour and four Cosmos coming right up, she said, turning to the bartender. As the girls fell into easy conversation, Alex's mind raced. He needed to get a grip if he was going to survive this night. He sipped his whiskey sour tentatively, surprised to find he actually enjoyed the tart, smoky flavor. So, Bella, Sarah leaned in conspiratorially. Spill the tea. Any new prospects on the horizon? It's been way too long since we've had some juicy guy drama from you. Alex nearly choked on his drink. Guy drama? He had no idea how to navigate this minefield. Oh, you know, he hedged. I've been focusing on myself lately. Career and all that. Jess rolled her eyes dramatically. Boring! Come on! There's got to be someone! 
What about that cute barista you were always going on about? The one with the man bun. Before Alex could formulate a response, Megan jumped in. Oh, leave her alone. Not everyone needs to have their love life on display 24 sevenths. Alex shot her a grateful look, but the reprieve was short-lived. Fine, fine, Sarah conceded. But you can't escape the dance floor, Missy. It's been way too long since I've seen those killer moves of yours. As if on cue, the DJ transitioned into a pulsing pop hit that had the entire rooftop cheering. Sarah grabbed Alex's hand, pulling him towards the crowded dance floor. Panic surged through him. He had two left feet as a man. How was he supposed to dance as a woman? The bass thrummed through his body as they found a spot amidst the sea of swaying bodies. Alex stood awkwardly, unsure how to move. He watched the women around him, hips swaying sensually, arms raised overhead. Taking a deep breath, he tried to mimic their movements. It was a disaster. His attempts at hip swaying looked more like a malfunctioning robot. He stumbled over his own feet, narrowly avoiding crashing into nearby dancers. Sarah gave him a puzzled look. Are you feeling okay, Bella? You seem off. Alex forced a laugh, trying to play it cool. Just a little rusty. It's been a while, you know. Mercifully, the song ended, transitioning into something slower. Alex breathed a sigh of relief, only to tense up again as he felt a presence behind him. Excuse me. A deep voice rumbled near his ear. Alex turned to find himself face to face with a tall, handsome stranger. The man's dark eyes sparkled with interest. I couldn't help but notice you from across the bar. Could I interest you in a dance? Alex froze, his mind blank. What would Bella do in this situation? Before he could formulate a response, Sarah answered for him. She'd love to, she exclaimed, giving Alex a not-so-subtle push towards the man. I'm Jake, the man said, his breath warm. And you are. But Bella, Alex stammered, trying to relax into the dance. It felt all wrong. He was used to leading, not following. Jake seemed to sense his discomfort. First time dancing with a guy? He asked, a hint of amusement in his voice. Alex latched on to the excuse. Is it that obvious? Jake chuckled, the sound low and rich. A little, but don't worry, I'll lead. Just relax and follow my movements. Easier said than done, Alex thought. But he tried to let go, allowing Jake to guide him through the slow, swaying dance. As the song progressed, he found himself relaxing slightly. It wasn't so bad once he got used to it. So, Bella, Jake said, what brings a beautiful woman like you out tonight? The compliment caught Alex off guard. He'd never been called beautiful before. It was strange, but not entirely unpleasant. Just a night out with the girls, he replied, trying to keep his voice steady. Lucky me. Jake grinned. Alex felt a blush creep up his neck. Was this what it was like for women all the time? The constant attention. It was flattering, but also a little overwhelming. As the song ended, Jake asked, Can I buy you a drink? Before Alex could respond, he felt a tap on his shoulder. He turned to find Megan, her expression a mix of amusement and concern. Sorry to interrupt, she said, not sounding sorry at all. But I need to borrow my sister for a minute. Girl emergency. Jake looked disappointed, but stepped back with a gracious nod. Of course. Bella, I hope I'll see you again before the night's over. As Megan led him away, Alex let out a breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. Thanks for the save, he muttered. Megan raised an eyebrow. Save? Girl, that man was gorgeous. I thought you'd be all over that. Alex fumbled for an explanation. I, uh, I'm just not feeling it tonight, I guess. They rejoined the group at their table, 
where Olivia was in the middle of an animated story. Uh, and then he had the audacity to ask if I wanted to split the bill on a first date. The table erupted in laughter and commiseration. Alex listened, fascinated despite himself. He'd never been privy to these kinds of conversations before. The dynamics were so different from what he was used to with his male friends. Men, I swear. Jess sighed dramatically. Sometimes I think we'd be better off without them. Speak for yourself, Sarah giggled. Some of us still enjoy a little man candy now and then. The conversation flowed easily, jumping from dating horror stories to work drama to the latest celebrity gossip. Alex found himself relaxing, even contributing a few times when he felt confident enough. It was... nice, in a way he hadn't expected. There was a warmth and openness to the group that he'd rarely experienced in his male friendships. As the night wore on, the effects of the alcohol began to show. Sarah was giggling uncontrollably at everything, while Jess had entered her brutally honest phase. You know what? Jess slurred, pointing an accusing finger at Alex. You've been weird all night, Bella. What's going on with you? Alex tensed, his mind racing for an excuse. I, uh, oh my god. Sarah gasped, her eyes wide. Are you pregnant? The table erupted in chaos. Alex sat there, stunned, as the women talked over each other in excitement and shock. What? No! He finally managed to splutter. I'm not pregnant! The denial seemed to snap everyone back to reality. Olivia leaned forward, her gaze intent. Then what is it? Come on, Bella. We're your friends. You can tell us anything. Alex looked around the table, at these women who cared about Bella so deeply. He felt a pang of guilt for deceiving them, even if it wasn't really his choice. In that moment, he wished he could tell them the truth, to unburden himself of this secret. But he couldn't. Instead, he took a deep breath and fabricated a story that he hoped would explain his odd behavior. I... I've been going through some stuff lately, he began hesitantly. Work has been really stressful, and I've been questioning a lot of things about myself. I guess I just haven't felt like myself lately. The women's expressions softened immediately. Megan wrapped an arm around his shoulders, giving him a squeeze. Oh, honey, Sarah cooed. Why didn't you say something earlier? We're here for you. You know that, right? Alex felt a lump form in his throat. The genuine care and concern in their voices touched him in a way he hadn't expected. I know. He managed. I just... I didn't want to bring everyone down. That's what friends are for, dummy, Jess said, reaching across the table to grab his hand. The good times and the bad. Exactly, Olivia agreed. Next time, don't keep it bottled up. We've all been there questioning ourselves and our choices. It's part of growing up. As the women showered him with support and encouragement, Alex felt a mix of emotions. Guilt for the deception, warmth for the genuine care they showed, and a strange sense of longing. He'd never experienced friendship quite like this before. The rest of the night passed in a blur of heartfelt conversations. More dancing, which Alex was marginally better at after a few more drinks, and a sense of camaraderie that left him feeling both exhilarated and conflicted. As they piled into a taxi in the early hours of the morning, Megan leaned her head on Alex's shoulder. I'm glad you came out tonight, sis, she murmured sleepily. We've missed you. Alex patted her hand, a small smile on his lips. Yeah, he said softly. I'm glad I came too. Across town, Bella was having an entirely different experience. She adjusted the baseball cap on her head, still marveling at how different she looked in the mirror. Alex's strong jaw, the hint of stubble, the broad shoulders. It was like looking at a stranger. You ready to go, bro? 
Ryan's voice called from the living room. The game starts in an hour, and I want to get good seats at the bar. Bella took a deep breath, channeling her inner Alex. Yeah, man! She called back, wincing slightly at how high her voice sounded. She cleared her throat and tried again, deeper this time. Be right there! She grabbed the worn leather jacket hanging by the door, so different from her usual stylish blazers, and headed out to meet Ryan. The sports bar was a sensory overload. Dozens of TV screens blared different games, while the air was thick with the smell of beer and fried food. Groups of men, mostly in jerseys or casual wear, crowded around tables and the bar. Ryan clapped her on the back as they entered, nearly knocking her off balance. Let's grab those seats by the big screen, he said, gesturing to two empty stools at the bar. As they settled in, Bella couldn't help but notice the differences in how she was treated. No one was falling over themselves to buy her a drink or chat her up. Instead, there was a sort of unspoken camaraderie with the other men around them, acknowledging each other with nods or raised beer bottles. What'll it be, fellas? The bartender asked, approaching them. Bella panicked for a moment. What did Alex usually drink? Uh, just a beer, she said vaguely. Ryan laughed. Come on, man, your usual. Bella nodded, grateful for the save. The bartender returned moments later with two pints of a dark, frothy beer. She took a tentative sip and nearly gagged. How did men drink this stuff? As the game started, Bella found herself struggling to follow along. She'd never been much for sports, preferring yoga or spin classes to watching grown men chase a ball around. But she tried her best to mimic Ryan's reactions, cheering when he cheered, groaning when he groaned. Man, can you believe that call? Ryan exclaimed during a commercial break. Ref must be blind! Bella nodded vigorously. Yeah, totally, she agreed, having no idea what call he was referring to. As the night wore on, Bella found herself relaxing slightly. The constant pressure to be on that she felt as a woman in social situations was absent here. There was no need to worry about her makeup or if her outfit was flattering. It was freeing, in a way. During halftime, a group of guys at a nearby table invited them over for a game of pool. Bella hesitated. She'd never played before, but Ryan was already agreeing enthusiastically. Hope you're ready to get your ass handed to you, Alex. One of the guys, a burly man with a thick beard, laughed as he racked up the balls. Bella forced a chuckle. We'll see about that, she said, trying to sound confident. She picked up a cue stick, mimicking how the others held theirs. To her surprise, she wasn't terrible. There was a certain geometry to the game that appealed to her analytical mind. She even managed to sink a few impressive shots, earning whoops and backslaps from the guys. Didn't know you had it in you, Alex! Ryan exclaimed after she pulled off a particularly tricky bank shot. You been practicing in secret or something? Bella grinned, feeling a rush of pride. Beginner's luck, I guess. As they played, the conversation flowed easily. Bella was surprised by how open the men were with each other, discussing everything from relationship troubles to career frustrations. It was a side of male friendships she'd never seen before. I'm telling you, man, one guy, Tom, was saying. Ever since the baby came, it's like Sarah and I are ships passing in the night. I love my kid, but I miss my wife, you know? The other men nodded sympathetically. Bella was touched by the vulnerability in Tom's admission. Have you talked to her about it? She found herself asking. Tom looked surprised, uh, then thoughtful. Not really, he admitted. I guess I didn't want to add to her stress. She's already got so much on her plate. Maybe that's exactly why you should talk to her, Bella suggested gently. She might be feeling the same way. The guys were quiet for a moment, considering her words. Then Ryan chuckled, clapping her on the shoulder. 
When did you get so wise about relationships, Alex? You holding out on us with a secret girlfriend or something? Bella laughed nervously. Nah, just, you know, picking things up here and there. As the night wore on, Bella found herself genuinely enjoying the company. The banter was different from what she was used to, more direct, peppered with good-natured insults and crude jokes, but there was an underlying warmth to it all. They ended up at a late-night diner, crowded into a booth with plates of greasy food in front of them. Bella marveled at how much they could eat. She'd always been conscious of her diet, but here she was, digging into a massive bacon cheeseburger without a second thought. So, Alex, Ryan said around a mouthful of fries, you've been kind of quiet tonight. Everything good with you? Bella paused, fork halfway to her mouth. She thought about deflecting, but something about the genuine concern in Ryan's eyes made her reconsider. I've just been thinking a lot lately, she said carefully. About life, you know? Sometimes I feel like I don't really know who I am anymore. The table fell quiet. Bella worried she'd said too much, revealed something too un-Alex-like. But then Tom nodded slowly. I get that, man, he said. I think we all go through phases like that. Hell, becoming a dad turned my whole world upside down, made me question everything I thought I knew about myself. The others chimed in with their own experiences, times they'd felt lost or unsure of their path. Bella listened, touched by their openness and the way they rallied around each other. Look, Ryan said, leaning in. Whatever you're going through, we've got your back. That's what bros are for, right? There were nods and murmurs of agreement around the table. Bella felt a lump form in her throat. Thanks, guys, she managed. That, that means a lot. As they left the diner, full of food and a warm sense of camaraderie, Bella found herself reflecting on the night. She'd always thought of male friendships as somewhat superficial, all sports talk and crude jokes, but tonight had shown her a depth she hadn't expected. Ryan threw an arm around her shoulders as they walked. Good night, huh? he said. We should do this more often. Bella nodded, a small smile on her lips. Yeah, she agreed. We really should. As they parted ways, Bella felt a mix of emotions. Gratitude for the glimpse into Alex's world, a newfound appreciation for male friendships, and a twinge of sadness that she couldn't fully be herself with these men who clearly cared about Alex so much. She made her way back to Alex's apartment, her mind swirling with the events of the night. As she collapsed onto the bed, still marveling at how different it felt in this body, she couldn't help but wonder, what would happen when she and Alex switched back? Would they be changed by this experience? And how long could they keep up this charade before someone figured it out? Thanks for watching my girlies! Be sure to check out Patreon for more!